Hi, I'm Catherine with Epic Mountain Sports and bringing you the local scoop today. I have Karen Weshley. She's an avid Nordic skier here to tell us a little more about what's available in the valley for Nordic skiing. Hi, Karen. Thanks Hi. for coming today. Thanks for having me. So everybody knows about the downhill skiing here, but there's a lot of other opportunities for Nordic or cross-country skiing. What can you tell me about that? Uh, the uh, Grand County has the most uh, kilometers probably any place in the United States for cross-country skiing. Um, there's Devil's Thumb with 100 kilometers of trails. Uh, Snow Mountain Ranch of the Rock uh, Snow Mountain Ranch YMCA of the Rockies has about 100 kilometers also, and then Grand Lake has about 40. In addition to those, there's lots of backcountry skiing you can do on uh, non-groomed trails up in uh, the Experimental Forest and Idlewild. Anything that you bike in the summer, you can ski in the winter, and those those trails have the benefit that you can take your dog on it, which is always a bonus for people right. who live here. That's a lot of trails. It is a lot of trails. So if I was to get started in cross-country skiing, what do you recommend? Where do I go? How do I start? Um, the first thing to do, just like alpine skiing, if you've never done it before, is to take a lesson. And any of those Nordic centers have excellent, co excellent coaches, um, great equipment, and uh, with your uh, package you get a trail pass and instruction and and the equipment and then you could spend the rest of the day skiing as well but it just gets you off on the right start and uh, makes your experience a lot uh, easier um, you become a more efficient skier and um, I think can enjoy yourself a lot more so a lesson's the way to go to I definitely start. yeah so there's a couple different types of techniques in cross-country skiing. What are those? Um, there are, and uh, maybe if you've watched the Olympics, you've seen the different techniques. What people are, I think most people associate cross-country skiing with is the classic technique, and that is in groomed trails. Okay. They're parallel, uh, trail, uh, parallel tracks, and um, you move your skis side by side, and you stay in the tracks, which actually gives you some stability as well. Um, and then the other technique is skating, and that is on a <clears throat> different type of ski, and you're in the other part of the, when you're on a groomed trail, the flat part, it's groomed like corduroy, kind of like the downhill area. And you push from side to side, sort of like a hockey player or on, if you're on roller okay. blades, it's yeah. that motion. So, so you're actually sharing the trails. You're sharing the trails. There's, there's usually classic tracks on one side. So if it's a real wide trail, they're on both sides. Okay. And then the middle section is the flat part where you skate. Okay. So, so it sounds like the skating is a little bit harder It is learn. a more dynamic, uh, larger muscle group uh, activity. Um, it's harder to go longer when you're first starting because it's very anaerobic big muscle okay. groups. If you're choosing to go for, a, you want to go for a nice leisurely two-hour ski, I would suggest classic skiing it because you can slow your speed down and still be moving. In skating, there's a certain amount of energy you have to expend just to even move, mm -hmm. and it's a lot more than with classic skiing, and so it's harder to keep that up, and especially at this elevation, 9,000 feet. If you're not really fit, it, it right. gets very, <laughs> very taxing, very demanding. You're not uh, always going downhill. No, unfortunately not. To, to go down those fun hills, you have to go up first. And so. how do you get up those hills? Um, you'll learn that in a lesson, but the technique um, is usually a little quicker tempo. Um, you can't hold the glide as long, and if you need to stop and take a rest, that's perfectly acceptable. No one will tell on you, and uh, I have to do that on occasion, too, when <laughs> some of those climbs are, I've walked you know, up some hills, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you don't want to walk down the hill. You want right. to get the technique good enough so you can enjoy all that hard work that you did to get up there, because it really is a wild ride on the on going downhill on cross-country skis. That's, that's pretty scary going down, yeah. even a small hill, yeah. because you just feel like you have no control on it. Well, you, you learn, and the equipment has improved a lot to to help you have more stability and and uh, corner better okay. on cross country skis. So obviously the equipment's different. It is a little different. Um, let's see, a uh, classic pull and a skate pull. Skate pull is longer, typically will hit you mm -hmm. between the chin and the nose. And the classic pull is about right here in your shoulder. Okay. Uh, armpit to about up to the side. That way. is a big difference. So that's a little different. I'm gonna give you those to hang on to a second. Um, the ski, um, <clears throat> typically is about 10 centimeters difference. This one, these are mine, but they're not quite as um, uh, big of a difference. But the classic ski is typically 10 centimeters longer. So this is the classic ski. This is the ski. classic okay. ski. The skate ski is a little bit shorter, a little stiffer ski. Um, doesn't ha have the um, camber in here where you're trying to uh, press down on a classic ski um, for the kick. And okay. skate ski, you ride it from tip to tail. Um, as glide wax in a classic ski, your tip and your tail have glide wax, but then the center is the kick zone where you put um, a sticky kick wax on it. Okay. So, 
Um, and then the boot is significantly different also. So you can get both types of these skis. You can rent them at all yes. the Nordic centers. Yes, and you can take a classic lesson or a skate lesson. Okay. Um, classic boot is a lower cut boot, as you see, and um, skate boot is stiffer through um, the the bed because you're pushing off completely with okay. your foot. There's no flexion. You see there's two points where it's going to connect in the binding and the classic boot has more flexion in the toe which is where you do your kick. They don't look quite as uncomfortable as ski boots. They're very they comfortable. They should, fit, they should fit like a running shoe. Okay. Um, a little wiggle room in your toes. They're lightweight. Um, the technology has changed a lot. They're, they're not cheap. People used to associate cross country skiing as being a very cheap right. sport. Um, top of the line poles can be four hundred dollars. They're ki carbon. Wow. They're very lightweight. Class the skis can be six hundred. The boots can be four hundred. So renting's the way to go. Renting's the way to go out. to get started out. Find <laughs> yeah. out if you like it or not. Great. So hand you those okay. back. So what do I wear to go cross country skiing? Um, it, it, do not wear a snowmobile suit. I used to teach at <laughs> Devil's Thumb, and we'd had people come in with snowmobile suits, and within five minutes they had it stripped to their waist and were I dripping wet. That, yeah. It's like you should dress as if you're going for a run in layers okay. and breathable layers, um, and uh, take a water bottle carrier because you will get dehydrated because you are expending a lot of energy. Okay. Um, skiing. And you wear gloves. And I wear gloves, sometimes mittens, depending on how cold okay. it is, um, and it just depends on your your body temperature. There's, you know, the the true True Nordic skiers are from Norway and Sweden, and, and they go gloveless. You know, they've, oh, wow. they've, they've got that in, not, not here in the Fraser Valley. No, there's some kids. There's some kids that I've coached before okay. that don't go with gloves, and it's amazing to me. But they just. But you can always peel layers peel off. Peel layers and, off. Yep. Okay. Yep. You obviously don't need a helmet. Not need a helmet. Okay. No. Although, like I said before, it, you need to learn some control on your downhills okay. because you could wrap yourself around a tree very easily if you didn't know how to snow plow at least. Right. So, <laughs> so this is a sport the whole family can enjoy. You can take your kids out. Can well, they start really young? They can start really young. Um, as soon as they're walking, I had my kids out there. Um, one option a lot of young parents do with, with young children is they'll rent a polk or a sled and you can um, have your child ski for a little bit and when they get tired of it, you throw the kid and the skis in the polk and then you get oh, a really good that, workout. Oh, that sounds like a lot of work. And, uh, <laughs> you, and then if they want to clamor out again, just don't let them bring the big toys like my oh. kids used to bring the top of the trucks <laughs> along with them and that added, added a little more weight and uh, got me in good shape anyway. Nice. So. So it sounds like there's a lot of different options you can do, a lot of trails out here, and mm -hmm. maybe something everybody should give a try. Yes, most definitely. If you're in the valley and want to break from the, the downhill area, your alpine skills will definitely help you as a Nordic skier because you've got balance and glide um, and some of those downhill skills like snow plowing, possibly. Right. So <laughs> that will help. Well, great. Thanks for coming out today, Karen. I appreciate it, and hopefully we'll all see you on the trails. Thank you very much. Uh, this is Catherine with Epic Mountain Sports with the local scoop of the day.